Thank you for joining our channel. Uh, we're going to go over a lot of the comments from the first video where I was interviewed. Most likely the reason why you're seeing this now is that the second interview has dropped. You've already seen my, my lovely other half, Mildred. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank so, you for your time. <laughs> so the next ones I want to talk about is this one, or is this batch. I'm just going to lump them all into one category. Just say that these are people who have issues that they that they really want to make someone feel bad or insult them. It's like weird that they want to do this. One of the things that um, I'm proud of that they, for some reason, tried to hurt me on is that uh, I'm I I really try to go against toxic masculinity. I really try to respect you and your desires and what you want. I want to encourage and honor you for those things. Um, I'm not, I, the whole alpha male stuff is just such crap and it's a horrible model. Why would you want to be that person that has to like intimidate, scare and direct and like be a supportive human being for your spousal unit, whether they're male or female or agender, you can just love them and support them, not dominate them. But these people have this feeling like there's, like that's what they that's what they need to see, so that they can feel comfortable in who they are, and that's strange. Well, if you think that's weird, I you know we are weird. <laughs> you are weird. We are weird. We're weird. We are weird. <laughs> we've established. So, we've had that conversation a long time ago. We both know that we're weird. Yeah, so let them be weird and let us be weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bunch of other comments that were talking about me being desperate, which I find weird and strange because, like, if you're looking for love and you're just looking for love, like, in a part time effort, but you're just like walking along and just kind of like, maybe love will happen, maybe love won't. Like, that's cool, but then there are people who want love, who've done the work, gone to therapy, gone through all kinds of things, had had terrible relationships, long-term relationships, short-term relationships, did a lot of self-examining, and they know that they are lovable and that they're looking for love, and they put the effort into finding that. And there's a lot of people who would take that as being desperate because if you're actively seeking a relationship, um, for some reason, American society like says like, oh, if you're actively looking for a relationship, you're desperate. And it's like, wh why? If that's what you really want. Why? Yeah. If you know what you're looking for and then you find that, well, you wouldn't waste time, you know? It's, it's <laughs> like, not yeah, why? Yeah, because it's something you could lose or win. <laughs> right. So, so like, one thing is that we're currently in the pandemic. Yeah. People are dying left and right. There's no guarantee about tomorrow. Yes, so exactly. Why would you spend your time worrying about looking desperate or, or something like that when you're like, I found the person and I've already asked all the questions and all the research. Why would I wait? Yeah, we really did our research to, you know, to know who we are. It's like we've done a thorough investigation of ourselves, who you were, who you are right now, or who I was and who I am. So we did that, but in a short period of time because <laughs> yeah because, because you you can know a person by asking deep questions by asking personal questions you would know and you can tell also if he or she is telling the truth or honest to his answers you would feel that and you would you would know that that his answer is genuine or real or he's not faking it you know that is one of the reasons why the first questions that i asked you was about your history 
I didn't need the specifics. I just needed to know that you had 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 relationships, serious relationships, gone through them, reviewed your parts in them, and how you wanted them to be, and what you were looking. For. We both are brave enough to like to share our vulnerabilities. It's it's a, it's a, it's a strength, you know. When you ask when you ask somebody about their bad experience, their vulnerabilities, some of them don't want to talk about it. Yeah. They don't they don't have the trust in, in other people. And they don't have the trust in themselves. They 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 aren't ready for intimacy and so they're hiding Yeah so and yeah, and they're they're not ready for judgments as well because they aren't you ready know for if judgments. that's a perfect word. that's a perfect word. Mm-hmm. I suspect that's kind of what these guys are all like. I suspect because they're they're putting off that vibe that they will not really be intimate in a relationship. Like they'll be sexually intimate, but they can't be like intimate with their heart because they want to be alpha. They want to be dominant. They want to be seen as the tough guy. And like tough guys' image is to not be intimate. Um, that was not me. I made that clear. I told you, I am a, I'm a big, yeah. soft, bleeding heart, lovey-dovey guy. Yeah, you I knew that. You knew that. I knew that, and I feel that. And you know, you're 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 a very cool man I've ever met. You know, when I first, when I, when we were together, you were the same person I knew online when I met you. So yes, it's and and I think that's one thing I love about you because you are you are not um it's like you're not uh you're not tough. I mean you are you are a man but with a with a soft heart. You're not telling me uh, like you do this or you do that. Because there are some guys that oh you do this and do that. It's like but you, you know, as I, I found out that you're not that man that, not a controlling man. So, yeah. I, I, in this relationship, want to do my best to give you all the freedom to be who you really are. Yeah, and I knew, I knew that you're very supportive. You're very, very supportive. And, if there's one thing that like, I want to do, I always ask you, can I do this and that? Are you okay with that? And you say, go ahead and then I'll support you. And then he always gives me um, advices, what what steps I'm going to do. And if it's something I know about. If, if it's something yeah, I've done. Yeah, if it's something you know about, but you know, you know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what you want, has to come from the experience of you having been through relationships and having them fall apart. And the relationship model that we talked about having was a partnership. It wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna be like, I'm the guy and what I say goes. It was just like, I really, to, to feel like this is a relationship that I want to be in, I need to know who you are, how you feel and what you want. Yeah. If you share your experiences and everything about you, your past and the present, and your plans, and your and your plans and goals or dreams for the future, I think that's that. Uh, from that alone, you build trust and you build relationships. So that makes you feel um, comfortable and like you know, oh, um, he's he's really. <laughs> It's, it's like you you feel that you we are in the same path because that's that that's what the path that that's what the path that I want to and you are also so it's like we're we are really in one direction so that's why we got connected as as early as possible because many Southeast Asian and East Asian countries enforce this idea of that ranking where the men dominate is attractive to men who want to be dominant bossy uh, mass the, the the typical patriarchal kind of arrangement yeah it's like the women the women should uh, submit to their husband in all areas 
I'm not yeah. that guy. I'm not. And I made that clear. I don't want to do that. I I want to love and cherish my wife as an equal. I think that was like probably the third thing I said. And I don't want that guy anymore. <laughs> I want a man in my life that's free to do the things I want to do in life and for our family. But of course, I have to uh, tell you that what, this is what I'm going to do. Are you okay with that? It's like a com compromise, you know. Yeah, you, you have to compromise. If it's if it's oh. good, if it's not, if there's there if there's a thing that I want to do and that it's not good for me, it's not good for you, and it's not good for our family in the future, then make a de decision or think about it that oh I think he's right and you know something like that. We have so to have that talk. We've already had yeah. a few things. We've had a mm -hmm. few things that I don't even think we even noticed that we did, but there were some discussions that we've had about yeah. stuff that we wanted to do or stuff I wanted to do and you were like, eh, and then I wouldn't do it or vice versa. We've already had those come up and because another part of the relationship that we established early on, um, there wasn't a fight. It was yeah, a it discussion. Wasn't. It was just, it was a discussion that needs to be, uh, you know, needs to be tackled. So in the future, when we have that, uh, Conflicts. We know how to to balance 